Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and I too, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to do a USB BIOS flashback on the Gigabyte A520M DS3H. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to do a USB BIOS flash on this board. This is the Gigabyte A520M DS3H. Now there's probably a few reasons why you might want to flash the BIOS on this board, um, be it compatibility with newer processors, or maybe you're struggling with an existing one. For me personally, I'm actually struggling with a Ryzen 5 3400G, which just refuses to play any games in 3D. It just crashes out, runs fine in Windows, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not having a good time. It isn't technically supported on this board, so hence why we're going to be trying to do a BIOS flash, get it up to date, and see if we can actually get to use this 3400G on this particular platform. So what do you need to actually perform a BIOS flash with this particular board? So obviously, first of all, you're going to need the board itself, something to put it on, such as the motherboard box is absolutely fine. You will need a USB drive, ideally USB 2, but it doesn't really make a great deal of difference as long as it's below 32 gigabytes in size, or 32 gigs or below, I should say, and needs to be formatted in the FAT32 format. XFAT sadly will not work for those of you that are about to ask in the comment section, so do make sure it's FAT32. Also, you will need a power supply with two connections on. One of the connectors you need is the EPS connector, so that's either a 4 or a 8 pin connection, and also you'll need the ATX24 pin connection. Another thing you'll also need is a computer with a USB port, so you can actually download the BIOS from the Gigabyte website and then transfer it onto your USB stick. Now in this particular video we'll be using a Windows 11 PC, so we'll go through the motions. The uh, situation is pretty much exactly the same for Windows 10, a few cosmetic differences but the principles are the same. So let's head over to the PC and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to put our USB drive into the computer. And fortunately this is a empty drive, but let's just make sure it's formatted correctly. So what we're going to do is right click on the drive and we'll choose format and just make sure that it is set to FAT32, which it is already, which is excellent. Uh, allocation size, we can set it to default. And volume label, ideally make sure that's blank. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, I don't think, but I always like to blank it just in case it tries to read a volume label for any reason. So once you're happy with that, click on start, and you'll get the warning that it will erase all the data on this disk. Obviously, make sure you're using a drive which you can erase, and when you're happy, click OK. Once the drive is ready, it will say Format Complete, and then we can close this window. So the next part is to actually obtain the BIOS file itself. So for us, we're going to have to head over to the Gigabyte website, which I've conveniently got up already. I will put links in the video description so you can find this out for yourself, but essentially gigabyte.com forward slash motherboard forward slash your motherboard, etc, etc. Links will be in the video description. So this is the particular board. This is the A520M DS3H Revision 1. Make sure you get the correct one, otherwise uh, things can go bad very quickly. And we've got all the BIOSes here, so if you go into the download section, and we've got all the versions here. So the, uh, the one that originally ships with this board is the F2, which actually was on the board when I got it. I believe it's on F10 now, because we have been doing some things with it. But it doesn't seem to have cured our problem that we're having. So this one improves system stability, F12, and there's F13G which uh, I'd imagine is going to be a, uh, a beta BIOS. So let's go with F12 to be safe. And all we need to do is click on download and then choose a suitable location. So we're going to choose the desktop and this is a, a zipped archive. So click on save and then that'll download to the desktop. So we'll show in folder and then we find our file. So let's extract the folder. So right click and choose extract all. I'm going to extract it to the same location. And this gives us a folder with various things. So there is the actual BIOS file. That's the one we actually need. So what we need to do is actually rename the file. Now make sure that you've got on your system, if you go into options, and you probably have to show in view that you've got show hidden files, folders, and drives. And also make sure that hide extensions for known file types. Get rid of that. So that'll show all the file extensions because we want to change the file extension. So what we want to do is rename this file. So double click and we're going to call it gigabyte dot bin. 
and that's all lowercase, so gigabyte.bin. Once you're happy, press enter, and it'll give you this information saying it's gonna be unusable, etc., etc. that's fine. And then what we need to do is to drag that file into our USB drive. Once you're happy that's gone across, make sure that it's in the drive and we've got the file there. So now you can go ahead and remove the drive. So I'm gonna click on eject the drive and we can take the drive out of the computer. So the next part of the process is to transfer the file we've got on here onto here. So let's get things set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get our test bench ready. So we're just gonna be using the motherboard box for this particular procedure, which is absolutely fine. Just keeps it off the desk and obviously prevents it from shorting out on anything which might be nearby. We're also gonna to need to have our power supply. So we're using the uh, integrator 700 watt. Obviously you can use whatever you've got. As long as you've got those particular connections, which are the eight pin or four plus four pin for your EPS connector, which is up in the top of the motherboard. So we'll plug that one in first of all. And the next one is going to be our 24 pin main power connector. So let's go ahead and plug that one in also. And that, my friends, is essentially it. So next thing to do is to get our USB stick and actually put it into the BIOS flashback port. So on this particular board, there is a port there in the USB 3 section, which is colored white, the rest of them are blue. So that is our USB flashback port. So we're gonna go ahead and leave our flash drive in there. Connect to your power lead, and then you can turn the power supply on. And at this point, nothing should happen, which is a great sign. If you do have a, a stick of RAM in here, or processor, processor fan, that sort of thing. It is completely normal for the lights to come on in standby for the RGB, if you've got it on lights and any other peripherals that may have. If you've got a fan attached to the CPU, then you will find that the fan will spin when you're going through this process. So don't be too concerned if that happens. The system won't boot up, but it will kind of look as if it is. This board doesn't have any diagnostic LEDs, so we've got no real uh, gauge of what is going on with the actual motherboard itself but we do have a BIOS flash button. The button has a, it's kind of amber or orange LED next to it, so it does give you some information, some feedback of what's going on. Again, when you do this, you may find that your fans will spin up, etc., etc. But essentially what you need to do is to press and hold the button for about two seconds or so until the amber light starts flashing. Now it will flash quite quickly to begin with. Once the BIOS file is actually being read from the USB stick, the light will then slow down. And then when the process is done, the light will extinguish. At this point, you may still find that your power supply is still running. Also, if you've got a fan attached, then you may still find that spinning as well. As long as the actual LED has extinguished on the BIOS flashback section, then you're good to turn off your power. But we'll see how that goes as we go through the video. So let's get it started. Did I turn on my power supply? Yes, I did. So that is on, we're ready to rock and roll. So again, all we need to do, press and hold for a couple of seconds. One, two. And there we go. So this is the faster flashing. So keep an eye on that. This is the kind of the starting speed. So this is now reading from our USB stick. If potentially you've got a USB stick with LEDs on it, you may find them flashing as well. But this is actually taking the bars. If it flashes about three or four times and stops, that means either the USB stick is not recognized or you've got the incorrect file. The board is on the, the BOS level that you're already trying to flash or the, just the file name is wrong. So there's a few things you can check again. So we see now we've got a solid light and now we've got a slower pulsing. So that means now that the BIOS is transferring from the BIOS flashback system into the main system BIOS, which I believe is that little chip there. So now we'll leave this for a little while. This should carry on pulsing. We'll fast forward the rest of the video. Normally this takes around about five minutes, six minutes possibly. So you've probably got time to go off and have a cup of tea, but ideally you probably want to keep an eye on it just to uh, see how it goes. Unless you're very confident, in which case, yeah, go and have a cup of tea and we'll uh, come back when it's all done. Okay, so the, uh, the board is powered down. As you can see, the, uh, the LED down here is extinguished. And actually, surprisingly, I didn't expect it would, but actually the, uh, the power supply is turned off as well. So if you're doing it on a bare board, you'll find that the, uh, the whole thing will shut down completely. I have done this earlier on today, actually, with a slightly lesser BIOS version, 
with a processor attached and memory installed and it didn't turn off at the end. So obviously if you're doing it and your system hasn't powered down, but you do have things connected, then that'll be the reason why. But as long as the LED has turned off down the bottom there, you should be absolutely fine. So there we go, that is the uh, the BIOS all done and dusted. All we need to do now is obviously just disconnect everything. You can now format the drive back to normal so you can use it for something else. And uh, yeah, carry on building your system with your new shiny 5000 series processor. Or maybe like me, you're gonna stick in an old 3400G and hope and pray that it actually works as it's meant to. So let me know if this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give it a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, then hit the subscribe button and the chime icon and you'll be notified of future video releases. Of course, if you need any more help or support, then we do have our Discord chat, which you're more than welcome to join, or just hit me up in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.